Hello everyone, welcome to another Doctor Who deck tech. I've got one more up my sleeve that I think you'll really enjoy. Today we're exploring Danny Pink and an interesting mono blue commander that has some crazy shenanigans with counters. Danny Pink is a legendary creature human soldier advisor. He costs three and a blue. He's a 4-3 with Mentor, and creatures you control have, whenever one or more counters are put on this creature for the first time each turn, draw a card. This is incredibly potent. Triggering a draw off of each creature that gets a counter is extremely easy to activate and is going to net you a ton of cards. Now, we're only playing in mono blue, which does limit a lot of the counter strategies that we can do, but let's dive into what cards work best for the strategy. First, we need to play to our strengths. Counters are not universally supported in blue as they are in white or green, so we need to play a strategy that works really well in blue. Fortunately, a lot of cards that give you plus one plus one counters also want you to draw cards, which is perfect because Danny Pink draws you cards when you put counters on things. It's an incredibly strong strategy and it compounds the more of these kinds of creatures that you have. Fairy Vandal, Knights of Dol Amroth, Latin M Adept, and Thopter Mechanic all get a counter on the second draw. What will happen with these when they're out is that Danny will either put a counter on something or you'll just draw a second card on your turn and that will trigger them all and draw you extra cards. These are a good one-time effect that synergize really well. Ominous Seas isn't a creature, so it doesn't exactly get Danny Pink's benefit, but with the number of cards you're going to be drawing, it's going to be a great way to get a big creature out onto the board. Onirophage and Chasm Skulker are going to be the powerhouses in this deck, because they're going to keep on getting plus one plus one counters for each time you draw. Yes, this only triggers Danny once, but they're still going to get a ton of counters with all of the creatures that you have that are going to be getting counters, with the added bonus that Chasm Skulker gives you a bunch of tokens in the end if it gets removed. Nadir Kraken is the same as these other two, but you have to pay for the counter and you get the token immediately. Teferi Temporal Pilgrim benefits from your drawing and also makes another of these creatures that cares about the second draw, a perfect way to recur these drawing abilities. And then Wizard Glass has a relevant final level to the strategy, but we also know that we're going to have a lot of cards, so its first step is incredibly relevant as well. Now, there isn't a super wide selection of these cards that work super well in this strategy, so we're going to need to rely on other cards that add counters to things. These comes in two forms. The first one is cards that add counters to any creature, and then the second one is the cards that add counters to themselves. Let's start with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. It's a more expensive pick right now because it's popular and standard, but it's great in the deck, letting you turn things into powerful copies of creatures and allowing you to draw a card by putting a counter on something whenever you want. And Daryl Nerasil Reforged pumps up every creature you have every time you attack, which is insane and is going to be a staple in most counter decks, and this one is no exception. Avon Courier and Nesting Grounds are going to be great for spreading around those counters that we haven't managed to put on any of the others and then the proliferating triggers will do the same work here when we get to those. Cytoplast Manipulator and Vigian Graft Mage are our grafting creatures in this deck. They both have flexible abilities that we can use on other creatures, plus we can add more to them and make them more effective. Deep Glow Skate doubles all our counters when it enters, which will make a big board out of nowhere and will potentially draw us a whole bunch of cards if it's the first time we're adding counters that turn. Power Conduit, similar to Nesting Grounds, will let us take a counter off of something and put a plus one plus one counter on something, so any type of counter turns into power. Simic Flux Mage seems like a great way to consistently get more counters and put it on other creatures. Sword of Truth of Justice proliferates, but also puts counters on something whenever we deal combat damage with the equipped creature. The Ozilus is going to save our counters from falling off and let them back onto whatever creature we wish at the next combat. Tyrite Sanctum will give plus one plus one counters to any creature, then we could use it to give one of those creatures an indestructible counter if we have another way to move that around and copy it, that would be really effective. And then Zephyr Singer gives us flying counters to anything that convoked it, which is a great way to add a bunch of evasion to a bunch of creatures at once, as well as putting a whole bunch of counters on a whole bunch of things. The second category, as I mentioned, are cards that add counters to themselves. These essentially are little draw engines that we can continuously recur by fulfilling these requirements. Atmosphere Surgeon will give us oil counters whenever we cast a non-creature spell, then it will give something flying by removing one of these, another great way to give evasion to any creature. Chronomaton is a really cheap way to put counters on itself, so it's essentially a draw ability that costs one. Really, really good 
even in blue. Kosi's Trickster will punish others for searching their library by letting you draw and pump up Kosi's Trickster. Cryptic Trilobite is like Chronomaton in that it adds counters to itself for cheap, but we can also utilize those counters to activate abilities, which is most likely just going to let us draw more cards. Crystalline Crawler also helps with ramp and it really cheaply adds counters to itself. Hangerback Walker similarly is cheap to activate and if it dies we're going to fill up the board with flying tokens, which will give us more targets to give counters to. Renegade Silent puts a counter on itself on every one of your end steps and goads a creature, then protects itself until the next turn. This is awesome interaction in blue, and it works especially well with Danny. Skatewing Spy gives anything with a plus one plus one counter flying and can put counters on itself once. Steel Overseer will technically give all artifact creatures a plus one plus one counter, which is handy, but this is most likely just going to tap and draw as a card, maybe get us a few cards if we're lucky. Threefold Thunder Hulk is the last one in here. It's a crazy addition to the strategy from Ixalan. It makes creature tokens that you can sacrifice to its own ability to make its attack triggers more powerful by making even more tokens. This is an all-star in the deck, assuming you can get the seven mana to cast it, and it's going to be seen in a lot of artifact decks. Another strong counter strategy to have that I mentioned before is proliferating. This will essentially trigger every creature that you have with counters on them. There's not a lot more that I could say to convince you to run proliferate. It's a no brainer and you're going to see them in almost every plus one plus one counter deck anyways. So we have some that let us draw cards with Contentious Plan and Tezzeret's Gambit. Flux Channeler triggers on every non-creature spell cast. Karn's Bastion is a land, so it provides mana as well. Thrumming Bird will proliferate anytime it hits an opponent. And Staff of Completion has a lot on it, but we're probably going to use it to provide mana or proliferate. Now, we need some targets that will benefit from putting counters on them. The first option is Clones, which are great because they can copy strong creature effects from our opponents and give us big advantage over them by making them larger. My favorite of these is Cephalid Face Taker because it not only clones things, but makes it unblockable. And so putting counters on it makes it incredibly difficult to deal with, and then we can swap around what we're copying on each of our combats. Identity Thief similarly switches when it attacks, but it also flickers the other creature every time you do so, making it so that creature can't interfere with whatever you're doing on your turn. Nascent Metamorph is a fun way to add some chaos, copying the first creature that comes up in your opponent's deck. It could totally whiff, or it could be something awesome, but if we add counters to this, it makes it more consistently good. Spark Double can copy our commander, which will double the number of draws we get when we put counters on things, not to mention it puts a counter on itself when it enters. Another great option we have is unblockable creatures. As you saw with Cephalid Face Taker, you'll be able to swing through unharmed, and if we pump them up more with counters, we'll get a lot of damage through unchallenged. Amph and Path Mage and Deep Fathom Skulker let you pay to make anything unblockable, which is very good utility in the deck. Guild Thief, Invisible Stalker, and Mercurial Spell Dancer are all themselves unblockable and just decent creatures. Herald of Secret Streams makes anything with a plus one plus one counter unblockable, which is crazy good in this deck, considering the number of creatures that are going to have plus one plus one counters. And then the last one here is the Flood of Mars. It's a really cool one in the deck. It's not technically unblockable, but we can make it so easily by making an opponent's land into an island. But once we've done that, we can make our creatures into copies of it by putting counters on them, which also triggers Danny. It feels like this card was made for this deck, and it's one of the best attacking creatures that we saw coming out of the Doctor Who decks. Our interaction pieces are pretty standard for Mono Blue. We have Arcane Denial, Counterspell, and Reject Imperfection here as counterspells. The only standout one being that last one that lets us proliferate in the right condition. Then for removal, we have three of the best blue removal spells with Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, and Reality Shift. No real surprises here. Similarly, for Ramp, there aren't a lot of surprises here for a blue deck. The standard ones here are Arcane Signet, Mindstone, Soul Ring, and Thought Vessel. We have a few that go well with the counter theme with Empowered Auto Generator and Everflowing Chalice, since we can proliferate those counters and make them even more effective. Scepter of Eternal Glory and Throne of Eldraine are great at getting us a bunch of blue mana and also good in almost any monocolor deck. And finally, High Tide will double the amount of mana our islands generate on that turn, leading to some explosive turns. Our land package includes Myriad Landscape, Reliquary Tower, and the rest are just 32 islands.
Thank you for watching this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really excited to try this deck out against my friends. Let me know if I missed anything that you would have put into this deck, and I hope you have a similarly fun experience playing it as well at your tables. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you in the next one.